Hello and welcome to the Battling Barrow. Uh, I had no intro bit at the beginning, you may have noticed, because I had nothing to say. In this video, um, in the D&D campaign, we've got to Gulfor's Tower, and what I'm going to do here is show you how I set that up, because sometimes, I mean, it might be tempting to make this big, elaborate terrain piece of a tower, but when are you ever going to use it again? Where are you going to store it? So in this, I'm effectively just going to be using, well, I'm going to make a special terrain tile, but this could be something that could be used in other adventures, because all it is going to be is a hexagonal dungeon tile. And then we're going to put different things onto that to decorate the different levels of the tower. We're going to utilize the spiral stairs that we made in the previous video. Ah. And uh, just going to go through and show you how I laid up each level of the tower. So let's get crafting. The first thing I'm going to do is make the base tile. Uh, there are actually two uh, tiles, two base tiles needed for the tower. A large one and a slightly smaller one. I'm just going to cover the large one here and go over the small one when the time comes. For this, there's nothing exciting about it, it's just making a normal tile piece, but this is going to be eight grid squares by eight grid squares. My, uh, uh, grids are an inch and a quarter so that means mine is going to be 10 by 10 inches most people have an inch grid so yours will just be 8 by 8 if you make this I'll texture it as normal and the real interesting bit comes when we turn it into an octagon on each of the four edges at the center point I measure two and eight quarter inches either side uh, line these up at so you've got angles and cut them out uh, forming a octagon. It's probably a better mathematical way of doing this but for me this worked quick and easy. I then used this shape to trace around some chipboard and glued the pieces together. There's just one more little bit I want to do for this and that is incorporate the uh, spiral stairs going down uh, that we made in a previous video. So for this I just trace around those on one side and just cut that bit out. So if I'm not using the stairs, I can just put that bit, leave that bit as it is. If I want to use, put stairs into this tile, I can remove that section and pop the tiles in here. With that done, it's on to painting. It's nothing fancy. It's a black undercoat, a gray overbrush and a cream dry brush. Now let's detail the floors. The ground floor as seen here on the map uh, has some uh, stairs going up and either side of these there are two curtained off areas. Uh, there are two statues in the well here which I've already got so I'm not going to cover making those but what we're making here is the curtains. I, uh, in a photo editing package, I uh, got some tapestry, I made them tapestries for a bit more visual interest and of course you can use these then later on in any castle setup you have. So I made some of these and printed them out onto some thick card stock. Uh, it's about 300 GSM if you're interested. I just printed them at the exact size. Gonna get some Mod Podge to seal the uh, tapestry printouts and the portraits here. I only want to do this in one pass, so I don't want to reactivate the printer ink, but this will seal it in. We're actually almost using Mod Podge for its intended use, which is for decoupage and sealing, so that's nice for once. I'm going to let this dry and then cut them out using a rule and a very sharp blade. You will also notice some pictures, some uh, sort of portraits here. These are for a, uh, another floor. I'll make this available for or uh, for all levels of my Patreon, so that'll be available to you. I need a base for this, so I'm gonna cut a bit of chipboard that is four inches long and half an inch wide. I'm gonna texture this up with a, with a rock and then paint it in the same manner as the tile. Top part of the curtain, the curtain pole, is going to be made from a bamboo skewer, which I just stain with a brown wash. To do this, I am going to come along and crinkle the tapestry piece of card paper up to form the folds in the curtains. Just for a bit of visual interest, the top part of the curtain, I'm going to cut sort of uh, crenellations out so it looks more curtain-like. And when that's done, I'm going to use the bamboo skewer to sort of bend them round so they're almost bent into place already. Quick and fast attachment, I am going to use the hot glue gun and just put blobs of glue in the crenellations and stick the pole into these. 
I am going to trim the pole to size. All that's left to do now is to attach it to the base to help it stand up. For this, again, hot glue uh, is going to be used to attach the two pieces together. And that is it for this floor. We'll move on to the next one. The first floor is really easy. It's just beds. The map indicates some walls, but I'm not going to worry about this. I've just got beds. We've, we've made beds before, so just use those. Next floor, the uh, first floor, is a bit more interesting. This room has walls in, but they are turned invisible. Yeah, that's going to be a challenge. They're now glass walls, effectively. So I'm going to make these out of this thick bit of acetone I've had laying around. I use this for windows, but I'm going to use it for walls. And the first stage is to get a bit of textured with a rock uh, chipboard, and I'm going to cut strips down. These are half an inch thick and two and a half inches long. I'm also going to need a this central bit so I'm going to need a bigger base for that so this is going to be made from a square that is two and a half inches by two and a half inches and out of that I cut an inch and a quarter square out of it giving me an L shape. These then get painted up in the same way as the main tile. So yes, I'm just going to use this acetate, uh, acetone tape, whatever it's called. It's, it's see-through plastic. If you don't have any of this, you can get away with using um, some uh, plastic you get on these uh, miniature clamshell boxes. The easiest one I'm going to do is make the four walls. Uh, this is just... A piece that is two and a half inches long and two inches high. Next is that center piece and for this I'm just going to take a big long strip that is two inches high and I know it's going to be divided into sections so the first bit will be an inch and a quarter then an inch and a quarter then it'll be an inch and three quarters an inch and a quarter and an inch and a quarter give me a total length of six and three quarters. I will then score down vertically down each of those and fold it as required. These just get glued into place with good old hot glue. On to the next floor. The third floor will appear smaller to the players but it's not. It's because there are secret hidden passages. It's a sort of picture gallery with a uh, sort of smaller hexagonal um, octagonal wall and on the walls are pictures but behind these walls there is a secret passage which our villain will move through casting spells through the pictures at the players. So for this we are going to need to construct the walls. These are made from 6mm uh, XPS foam that are 2 inches high. Uh, we'll need a long bit that is 8 inches long and we're going to divide this into 3 with each corner being two and a half each corner each end coming in two and a half inches from each end and once more scoring down this and bending it into shape this piece of foam then gets textured with a texture roller i fill in the back gap with hot glue gun which will be largely hidden when this gets painted this also has the effect of strengthening the piece and holding it all into place these then get painted in the same way as the floors. Remember those pictures from earlier from the ground floor? I'm just going to glue these into place into the inside of the walls uh, as per the module description. So uh, some will have two per wall, some will have one per wall. And once that's done, this room is done. We're on to the uh, next floor. So this is the top floor and this is the room where the wizard will escape from through a hole in the wall but it's smaller than the other tile so it's just a case of making another uh, octagonal tile this time only four grid squares by four grid squares so in my case five inches by five inches and on one corner I just attach the stairs going down and that is it so yeah that's how I set up uh, the ruins of Zitika uh, I'll quickly show some pictures from uh, the um, 
playthrough so you can have a look at each floor set up. Uh, I'd like to take you at the time to thank you for watching, thank you for your patrons for allowing me to buy foam which is really expensive in the UK uh, and allowing me to build these. I've got many more projects lined up so I hope you enjoy them. Until the next video guys, stay safe, take care.